I'm Serge and in this tutorial I unpack the railing tool. Railings are one of the hardest tools in Revit to master. The railing tips presented in this video will be based on creating a crib wall such as the one shown on your screen. Hopefully this video will help you. If it does, please like, subscribe and comment. I think the best place to start is by unpacking what I have already done and showing you how I did it. As I click on the railing instance, I can edit the type to reveal the railing preview. Click this preview icon to help you understand how your railing is progressing during the building phase. Now, this rail is project specific. It is dependent on the batter angle required. I can switch to a plan view and then open up this section. Here is the rail highlighted in blue. This has a significant slope. In order to achieve the required slope angle, I first drew a reference line. The angle is 76 degrees. It is always good practice to name the reference. In another view, sketch out the intended design and using detail lines, I have drawn my rail before building it to ensure that I understand all of the required parts and how these work together. Adding dimensions will provide you with all of the required lateral offsets as shown in the image insert. Understanding offsets is crucial to building successful railings. In this rail, we also have to manage the height offsets. This will make more sense later in the tutorial once I start building. This rail is made up of two parts. Let's focus on the first of these, the baluster family. All parts that make up the final rail system can be found on the project browser. This will help you understand the railing anatomy. To create a new railing type, select these components and duplicate. The baluster in this rail system is this family here called header. I can select it and then click edit. This is a simple extrusion. What's important to know here is the origin point. That's this point where the references intersect. The origin is the offset point. The second part of the railing system is the stretcher. This has been simply created as a profile and also has an origin point. In the next part of this tutorial, I will rebuild the crib wall railing system from scratch. This is a new project file. Start by loading the components. Then from the project browser, find the default railing system called Railing 1. Right click and go to the railing properties. I will focus on the construction portion. Find rail structure and baluster placement. Start with rail structure. Click the edit button as shown. This opens up the rail editor. Use the preview pane to contextualize your creation. At the moment, this railing system contains one rail. This rail is called Rail 1. I will rename this S representing stretcher and the number 01. This rail is offset from the floor level 900 millimeters. I will leave this at this stage. Moving across the menu, the next item is profile. This is where I apply the stretcher profile I had previously created. At this stage, I will hit apply and notice the preview updates. To continue building, click the duplicate button and all property values are duplicated, but we can change the name to maintain the same convention. To separate the rails, I set rail 1's height to 0 and then hit apply. In the preview pane, I can now see two rails of the stretcher profile. Now. Before going any further, I want to emphasize how important it is to understand the anatomy of your rail system before you start building. On screen is a typical section of my rail system members before rotation. I need to combine the origin points from each member. The blue dot represents the offset point I need to measure for each run. Zooming into my previously made sketch, you can see how I have determined the rotation offsets both laterally and by height. I recommend using the snipping tool to capture these measurements so that you can enter them quickly when building. Revert back 
to the Railing 1 system. Select Edit Rail Structure and now using my Snipping Tool image, I can quickly record the offset values for height. I can then add more rails. With the rail structure defined, now balusters can be placed. Click the edit button to define placement. This editor is divided into two sections. The top section defines the pattern, which I will do first. In the preview pane, the previously defined rail structure is seen for context. I will add the baluster family I previously made, which is called header. But notice, as I click apply, that member is not shown on the preview pane. This is because I need to give it a reference. I can set the top reference plane to S04, which is the top of the rail structure. I also define a pattern length. I want the headers to be about two meters apart. And now when I click apply, the headers are visible in the preview. To add more balusters, I duplicate, but with each addition, I set the pattern constraint to zero. This is because this parameter defines the distance from the previous baluster. I can continue duplicating. At this stage, only two balusters are shown in the preview because no offsets have yet been applied. I will rename each member and then start to input the offset data. As frustrating as it may be, it's important to take your time when entering these numbers, as it will have a direct impact on the final result. With all of that done, I can apply. As I click, a warning pops up, reading, the top reference is below the bottom reference for one of the balusters. This is simply explaining that the fourth baluster cannot be hosted to the top of the fourth rail. In other words, I have added too many balusters. To fix this, I can simply delete. Following on, the preview pane displays an imbalance with the headers. To correct this, toggle the Excel fill length fill to truncate pattern. Then once I hit apply, the preview shows a clean and balanced rail system with an equal number of headers on each side. Switch the view in the preview to ensure that all is correct and proceed. Click OK to exit the baluster placement and notice the railing height parameter. This gives an overall height for the railing system. Now we can start to sketch segments to test our railing system. From the architecture tab, on the ribbon, find railing and click to sketch. I start by drawing a straight line and then adding an arc, but notice the segment lengths, that's important. Finish the sketch and switch to a 3D view. The first thing to notice is that the headers are missing. Also, Use the flip arrows to change the orientation of the slope. Now back to the missing headers. Remember the pattern length? This was set to 2 meters. Yet when sketching the rail, my segment lengths were shorter than 2 meters. As I extend these beyond the required 2 meters, the headers are now visible. I'll repeat this requirement for the arc length, ensuring that I exceed the 2 meter pattern length. Now let's talk corners. Returning corners and corner posts. Back in the baluster placement dialog. This time I focus on the lower half. 
So here I want to choose each segment end, which means each time I start and stop in sketch mode, I want the pattern to restart without a corner post. Let's unpack this more. On screen, I have a corner segment. I will edit this to show you the segments, which must not exceed 2000, which is the pattern length. This can be tricky because one could be tempted to think that setting corner posts to the setting of never would be the way to go here. But watch what happens if I apply that setting. Revit has added a corner post made up of the header families, but due to the slope angle of this railing system, that simply doesn't work. The important thing to understand here is what Revit means when it refers to segment end. To help you on that front, I will demonstrate. Type CS to create similar. I can start sketching my rail system. Each time I stop and start again, Revit calls that a new segment. So on screen, my system has three segments. As we zoom in, you can see that only the middle segment is missing the headers. When I go back into sketch mode, we can find out why. It's less than two meters. That's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you learned something new and found that interesting. If you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. And I will see you in the next video.